Cooking Next is a man responsible for introducing us all to the joys of Chinese cooking. It's the brilliant man, Mr. Ken Hong. Welcome back and Happy New Year. Which That's means, Happy New Year yes. in Chinese. And Wishing it's the year of the... The dragon. The dragon. And it's a very auspicious year. In fact, everybody is trying to have a baby this year. Are they? Because, you know, if you're born in the year of the dragon, you're going to be rich, successful, etc. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I was out born. He's, a, he's, he's a snake, and Emma, you're a rabbit. Oh, rabbit? Yeah. Yes. And I'm doing because I'm a rat. Anyway, you're right. That's okay. <laughs> moving on, what's our name of our dish then? No, this is crispy pork belly, yep. and it's a beautiful uh, Chinese New Year dish. Okay. And the thing is, uh, you wouldn't make this at home in China, because the thing is, people don't have ovens in China. Right. And in their homes. Yeah. And so you go to a specialty shop, but you have ovens here. So this is something you can make. Now, the, the technique is... You want to make holes in the skin, but yeah. I'm not going to use that. You can use a fork. And this is just a standard piece of pork belly, yeah? Yes, no, no I have bones. a no. secret weapon of Whoa. destruction. <laughs> okay. And... Did you bring that through customs? <laughs> yes, it's... Did you? <laughs> Did you? I checked it, I checked it, I checked it, <laughs> because I know it'll be on the front page of all the tabloids. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Right. You know, Chinese chef goes amok. <laughs> Where did but you get is, that from? Uh, this is from a special restaurant shop right. um, in places like Hong Kong, right. where they, they make it. And it's a really fantastic way to get out your frustrations. <laughs> <And> <laughs> we won't mention any names. <laughs> okay, and it's very, very safe. Now, right, okay. Very safe. Yes. Yeah. I'll move that over here. Goes in. <laughs> the next technique is to... Yep. Uh, actually, bathe the skin in very hot water like this. Right. Just the skin side. Because what you want is that the secret of this technique is that this will allow the skin to dry. And right. the best thing to do is actually to put it in front of a fan in a cool place. Is that what they do with sort of crispy duck, that kind of thing? Exactly, the same thing right. with Peking duck, especially. Right. Now, okay. we're just going to put that here for a minute while we make our spice mixture. And w what we have here is salt, some sugar, some five spice, Sichuan peppercorn, which you can roast a little bit in a wok, yeah. and some um, uh, white pepper. Right. You want to take this and just grind it up like this in a mortar and pesto. Yeah. And what you want to do is put this on the other side of the pork belly, not yeah. on the skin side, because the skin side will be dry, and if you put salt on it, it will draw moisture. So, so the, all, the idea of drying it all out, is that, yes. I mean, we had, a, we had one of the girls with a hair dryer on it yes. this morning, because it wasn't dry enough, but the idea is the dry fan enough. just dries out the skin. Exactly. Right. So what you want to do is rub this through like that, okay, and, and we have a lot of spice because Traditionally, this is this is hung, right? But obviously, you know, in homes you won't have that. So, a technique I found is you just put it on a rack like this. Yeah. All right. With the skin side up. Okay. It's okay if some of it falls over. Yeah. Because what you want to do is just rub this all on the side. So, uh, so only the side where the flesh is, not the yes, skin. Yes. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Ken, how long will you hang it for? Uh, at least eight hours. Eight hours? Okay. Eight hours, overnight. Yeah. So this is what it looks like I'll when it's dry, side. just to show you. And actually, when you touch it, it should actually uh, be hard. And, and uh, it feels like parchment. Right. See, and it's very, very dry now. Now, and when you roast it, okay. it just... We'll see it in a moment. So that just goes in the oven as it is. You don't exactly. need to do anything with it. Right. A high oven. Once it's dried. Right. After okay. eight hours. Now, people ask me all the time about, you know, fried rice. You know, how, I mean, how do you do fried rice? What's wrong with my fried rice when I cook it? Well, the problem is, I'll let you chop that. Yeah. It's, it's number one. People don't cook rice properly. The, the best way to cook rice is, this is what I, I was taught um, by the chef when I was 11 years old, is put a half a thumb. Depends By the chef when you were 11? Thumb. Yes. <laughs> was that your mum? No, it wasn't my mum, it was my uncle. All right. And uh, sort of a half a thumb of water over the rice, yeah. boil the rice until all the water is gone, yeah. and you'll see these little sort of craters in, in the surface of the rice. Turn it down to as low as possible, yeah. cover it tightly, 
and just let it sort of steam gently for about 15 minutes and you have perfect rice like this. Okay. And the secret, this is a, your new master class here, right. the secret to fried rice is to make sure it's nice and cold. Okay. In fact, you can even freeze it. I mean, once it's cooked, uh, frozen, sometimes it, I just throw it into the wok just like that. And this is not rinsed beforehand, this is just no, normal never... long grain rice, yeah? You know, it, years ago people used to rinse rice because they used to put talc powder on it. To prevent the talcum powder? No, talc powder. It's a type of no, powder. I was going to say. No, <laughs> <laughs> no they, 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 they. How far you were going back then? Okay? Uh, they, to prevent rats eating it. Right. <laughs> um, hey, now listen. Yes. It says on here that yes. the rat. You may take the yes. mix, but it says in yes. here the rat Gets is quick-witted, yes. clever, charming, sharp, and funny. Would you describe him? Thanks. Right cheers. Now. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the snake is insecure. Jealous and Ooh. slightly dangerous. No. Oh. dangerous. No. Yeah. Not like that. The rabbit uh -oh. likes <laughs> to enjoy the home, cannot house train, and is compatible with a goat or the pig. I think they've got yes. that from a different website, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but I'm an ox. You're an ox? Yeah, I'm an ox. Stubborn. So, yeah. Hard working. Mm. Uh, a leader. There you go. Reliable, uh, protective, yes. and a strong companion. Yes. Aww. There you go. He wrote that bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what are we no, going there I then? I have two eggs, a little bit of salt yep. and pepper, and um, a sesame oil. Sesame oil to it. In right. the egg. Okay. And a little bit of pepper here. Now, the secret to cooking, this is the, another master class, is always get the wok very, very hot before you start. We right. have vegetable oil. And a lot, common mistake is they use sesame oil on this. And it ruins exactly, it. it ruins it because yeah. it's too strong. Okay. And um, it's not right, it's better in the egg. Yeah. And you put the cold rice into the wok. See, this is, this is, prevents it from sticking. People always ask me when I do demonstration why... They use uh, hot rice. Yeah. Yes, it's, it, they use hot rice and it gets gummy and sticky. Right. And the thing is, what you want to do, since the rice is cold, you want to now cook it and, and reheat it. Okay. So. And this chars it as well, doesn't yeah. it? You can see this those little... I, I just loved it when my mom used to make it because we fought over this, my right. mother and I. I mean, it, uh, sometimes she was, um, I love my mother, I mean, I loved her dearly, but what she did was um, she would eat the nice crispy bits and then she said, there was no crispy bits. <laughs> <laughs> and leave you the other bits. No, no. <laughs> so we, and, and I would say, I smelt that. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah. So, right, she so you fry that off to get a little yes. bit of color on it first, always on a high heat. Always on a high yeah. heat. And what you want to do is, once that's really, really sort of heated through, that's yeah. when you add the egg. Now you're on your travels yes. again, aren't you, really? Because you're doing something, yes, something new doing, for us as well, which um, we can see in the UK. Yes, I'm doing a new series for uh, BBC Two yeah. on um, China. Yeah. And I'm doing that with uh, um, um, a, a companion, uh, uh, Ching. And we're yeah. going to go through China and explore I mean, food sets, so we can learn some things and share yeah. with the viewers. Yeah. So that will be really uh, very interesting. I have a new book. I have all these things happening. And I'm book. doing a thing for prostate cancer and breast cancer, marathon, all that sort of thing, keeping me out of trouble. Keeping you out of trouble. <laughs> well, we're just now, about ready to serve, so okay. you can finish that off. Okay. Now, I'll what you want to do it is when you're stir frying the rice, Stir fry till it, it gets really, really dry. That's important. Press it down like this to get the heat. Now, I know this is a favorite of yours. Yeah, you ain't getting any of this. You got no chance. There you go. Now oh, that is absolutely wonderful. Now this has had how long in the oven? That has been two and a half hours. Yeah. And you shock it. Yes. I'll high temperature it and then reduce it down. Exactly. Yeah? And see, see how it bubbles up like that. That's when it's really fantastic. Okay. Oh, so you can eat the egg fried rice, Ken. I'll just have this. I'll just have this and a bit of bread and butter. Lovely. This you could looks... just hear the crunch of that. Oh. Yeah. And what's beautiful, the way it's cooked is most of the fat has been rendered off, but it's still nice and moist, and and the skin. You see that? That's what the drying does. It allows that to be super crispy. Sounds good to me. Right, we're ready to serve. Okay. I'll add I'm the spring onions. Ready. Okay. Spring onions last All minute. All right. Yes. Just to the very last moment. I'll dish this up. Boy, we have enough for 
the entire studio. You're joking, are you? <laughs> what? You're not sharing that. <laughs> All right, here we are. Look at what a wonderful Chinese New Year treat. Oh Looks good. Mm. So while I plate that up, yes. you can tell us what that dish is okay, called. Okay, that's crispy pork belly Chinese style. Yeah. Roasted with egg fried rice, classical dish. In the year of the dragon. Yes. The man's a star. Check that Yummy! <laughs> roast pork belly and egg fried rice are actually quite subtle and the most important thing is to find a wine that will offset the richness of the pork and the weight of the rice without overwhelming the dish. Now I know that Ken, unlike James, is a fan of rosé wine and something like this fresh cherry flavoured rosé from Navarra in Spain would be a great option. But I'm in the mood for a white wine today, and a great variety that works really well with roast pork is Chenin Blanc. And so I'm going to choose a South African Chenin Blanc made by another legendary Ken, Ken Forrester. Chenin Blanc is one of South Africa's specialities, and it's known for its apple flavours and very refreshing acidity, which makes it a perfect match for crispy pork belly. Mmm, that's very zesty and, and fresh. Mmm, there's a, there's a really mouth-watering quality about this wine, which is essential with a soft, fatty meat like pork belly. There's also a touch of oak, which is giving it a spicy note that will pick up on the peppercorn and five-spice rub. And although it's a fruity wine, it's not too powerful for the overall dish. Ken? You've given us your delicious crispy pork belly, and I give you another Ken's delicious Chenin Blanc.